Today I wanted to make a video uh, regarding my worm bin. Um, just kind of go over how I put it together in a sense, how I use it, um, and things like that. So I basically use these five gallon totes that I picked up at a hardware store. Um, as you can see, there's three buckets and one lid. Um, I have a catch bin, which I'll go over. Um, my bottom feed bin, which allows me to essentially have two buckets to harvest from, and then my top feed bin, and then my lid. Um, I put holes, drill holes into the very top of this to allow for airflow, um, so that way things can kind of work in here. So I'm gonna start with the bottom bin, and then we'll kind of just work our way up, and I'll show you guys how I use it and things like that. So this is the bottom bin. Um, this is just, like I said, the catch bucket. Um, this basically it allows me to have this indoors and not make a mess. Um, so anything that kind of falls out the bottom, as you can see, there's a little bit of um, liquid. Um, there's some worms, um, some of the mud or worm castings down at the bottom. There's no holes in this. This is just literally um, just the regular bin. Um, and then we'll set the next one in. So I'll show you guys the next one next, and then we'll kind of keep moving our way up. All right, so this is the second bin. This is where a lot of the magic happens. Um, you can see a lot of the worms kind of just doing their thing. They'll start moving now that there's a little bit of light, uh, but when there's no light here, essentially they're just kind of migrating through towards the top. Um, so, when we originally set this bin up, um, it was mainly um, wood chips, um, leaf duff from the forest, some leaf mold, um, some old, a little bit of old soil. Um, and we added a few amendments um, just because we noticed that the worms weren't very happy. So we added things like um, crab meal because the, um, the calcium and then also the nitrogen would, would essentially help the composting process of a lot of these wood chips. Um, but we noticed that things didn't really start popping off until we started adding uh, food scraps. We also started that this was drying out, especially the heat that was being created by the composting process um, was drying this out pretty quickly. So we noticed that when we started adding food scraps in, especially melon, um, it added a lot of moisture. So that's one thing to be mindful of um, is how much moisture is in here, how wet it is, um, things like that. Cause you don't want this to get sobbing wet, um, but some banana peels um, this is the scrap of a melon these really seem to draw the worms in um, which allowed for them to grow and repopulate and um, just break this stuff down faster so this is the bin that we typically pull from now if you look at this the worm castings aren't done but this stuff is filled with life um, oh one thing I forgot to mention we also add our IMO3 into this in some Bukashi um, this stuff is packed with life. So you could take some of this material, soak it in a strainer, in a paint strainer, make a compost extract with it, water it in, and then what you're gonna be left with is a lot of this material that's not obviously broken down. Then you could just throw it right back into the bin or throw it into your top bin and it will just continue to break down. But you can see there's a lot of worm castings and things like that that you can essentially start pulling from. Now, the reason why we do um, another tier, actually, I'll go into the next tier and I'll kind of show you that um, before I kind of start explaining. All right, so now we're back to the beginning. So this is the very top bin. This is the bin that has a lot of the goodies in it. Um, you can leave it here and you can see um, a lot of life kind of just moving around. Um, there's more worms underneath. There's food that is still getting broken down. Um, isopods running around, there's soil mites in here. Um, all this stuff is essentially just being decomposed, right? Um, so this essentially is the bin that all the worms from the second bin will then begin to migrate into once this bin is complete. Um, that makes it easier to, um, if I wanna harvest the entire bottom bin, um, it makes it a little bit easier because this particular bin has holes in them. Actually, I forgot to mention that. Both of these two top bins are filled with holes at the bottom. Um, and we laid a piece of cardboard down at the bottom before we started adding material so things wouldn't fall through. Um, but we can dig into this and we can start seeing 
all this stuff being broken down, all the life that's in here. And over time, this will essentially become our worm castings. Once this bottom bin is done, and we decide to harvest it all, if we decide to harvest it all, then we'll just flip-flop these. Put the new bin on top, this will then become the bottom bin. Worms will continue to work this over the next couple of months, and then we'll have the new bin on top. But like I said before, you can always just start pulling some of this material out, soaking it in water. Um, I don't recommend pulling from this very top bin since there's a lot of just fresh material in here. Um, as you can see, um, this bottom bin is a lot more uh, things that have been decomposed and will provide better castings. Um, I encourage you guys all to make something like this. Um, you don't need a lot of space to make worm castings, but it is a powerhouse of biology and nutrients for your soil. And yeah, a little sense of self-sufficiency. Um, and it doesn't take a lot of space. Um, I'm in an apartment, this is a five gallon container, so we don't need a lot. This will be enough for a small grill. Um, to make extracts and, and things like that. And then also you get to recycle some of your food waste. So this will go right back on top. And that's my worm bin.